new, at the time, cutting-edge technologies. And through a series of projects that were very research-centric and allowed us to participate with large organizations in the federal space and um, also in the academic space, we were able to be part of, I suppose, the very, very early stages of the clear definition of service-oriented architecture, Mm -hmm. which at the time was a very simple definition and has since evolved a lot. But I just found myself being part of these early projects and being exposed to a lot of the thought process and research that went into defining this new paradigm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just very fortunate to be involved with that at the right time. And and that led to opportunities to do further writing about Mm -hmm. the topic. And uh, and that just naturally then also carried over into the the training program, Mm -hmm. which then later the community participation and involvement evolved into a much larger formal accreditation program. So to sum up, you were in the right place at the right time. Yeah, and <laughs> I guess you can say from that. There. <laughs> Very cool. Thomas, if you could tell our audience about the SOAschool.com site and the SOA Certified Professional Program. Well, this is what the um, training program that we've had now for 10 years has evolved into. It originally was comprised of a series of training courses focused on various aspects of SOA, but the company philosophy from the very beginning has been that we have complete vendor neutrality. We have no partnerships with product vendors, and we uh, we maintain that and take that neutrality very seriously. It's, it's allowed us to participate in various types of projects, especially in the public and defense sectors where that level of objectivity is a critical factor. And it also establishes a a core level of uh, integrity in that carries through all the courses. And so program itself evolved with a lot of external participation. Because we specialized in this space early on, we had a lot of contact with organizations that later became very important in the um, SOE industry, both in terms of research and academia, but also in terms of vendors that, that are building the technologies and the products. And we basically established this network of professionals that represented a cross-section of the industry as a whole. And with their involvement and with their support, the program basically was carried over from a training program into a formal accreditation program. We had universities that helped us define appropriate certification requirements and helped uh, shape the exams so that they were balanced and properly aligned with all the course materials. And then when the exams themselves went live via Prometric Testing Network, they became available worldwide and that was further supplemented with a separate self-study division that allows now anyone in the world to basically order self-study materials and then pursue certification by taking exams via their local Prometric testing centers. So overall, the program is, it is comprised of a series of individual certifications. There are certifications for SOA consultant, analyst, architect, a governance specialist, security specialist, mm-hmm. .NET developer, Java developer, quality assurance specialist, and most recently we've added the cloud computing specialist certification track. The curriculum itself is highly modularized. It's comprised of 26 individual course modules, each of which has a corresponding prometric exam. And some of the more fundamental courses apply toward multiple certification. Exams give you credit towards multiple certifications, whereas others are more specialized. And we found it necessary to expand into these specialized areas of expertise because what that helps organizations do is have um, is properly staff SOA projects with professionals that have the specific skill set that they need yeah. to fulfill one or more specific roles within the project. And with the modular nature of the program, project managers and IT managers in general can map the uh, various skills that the um, courses teach to those individual roles and basically ensure that all of this education is based on a common foundation so that all these individuals that attain these different levels of expertise, that they all have a common framework in terms of the the concepts, the practices, the principles, the terminology, the industry standards, and how they all relate to each other from the perspective of service-oriented architecture, service orientation, and just service-oriented computing in general. And that's extremely healthy 
for an organization because it reduces or even eliminates the risk that uh, there will be misunderstanding or confusion around how to build, how to uh, deliver, how to govern, how to share various types of programs being shaped as units of service-oriented solution logic that, that we then call services. So that's the structure and framework that the program is based on, and that's just some reasoning behind why it came to be the way it is today. That's very interesting. Because I consider myself an IT certification generalist, I know a reasonable amount about many different programs. And one thing that seems to stand out to me about the SOA school program is that it combines the best of, say, on the CompTIA certification side, the vendor neutrality and the collection of folks who really know what these skills need to be in the real world. So it's very practical. And then on the Microsoft side of the equation, where they're also, for instance, uh, componentizing or modularizing their credentials to define very narrow skill sets, like you said. Now, how does the SOA Education Committee fit into SOAschool.com and the certification programs? Well, what um, the community participation I, I mentioned before that helped yeah. make the program happen, it basically itself evolved into this separate entity, which is a, a formal but independent committee called the SOA Education Committee that is comprised of members from both industry and academia. There are members from Microsoft, IBM, uh, Oracle, Sun, and, and other organizations, as well as university professors that have developed and have experience with developing SOA curriculum for their various formal programs, in some cases varying from diploma to degree programs. And now there's a, not so the committee has taken shape, but there are formal processes in place, and uh, every quarter or whenever necessary, committee members receive updates to the program or they receive new materials that they are asked to review and provide feedback on. And so each committee member has a voice in terms of any changes made or any new materials introduced into the curriculum. And that includes also the self-study materials and the exams. And then, of course, they also have input regarding the overall certification requirements for a given type of designation to ensure that we receive a balanced perspectives on that as well. So it's become a very positive and healthy part of the evolution of the program. It ensures that it's not only vendor neutral, but also that it remains in alignment with where the industry is going. And that balance has always been very important to us. You can have something that's vendor neutral, but it's also out of touch with where the vendors take the commercial industry. But our intent is to ensure that it always remains in alignment with that because that is what's most valuable to the IT practitioners who rely on, on what they learn through the courses. So that's basically, it's just allowed the program to benefit from the involvement of those that are part of the committee. Plus, of course, there are others involved as well. Every course goes through a rigorous development cycle. Every exam goes through uh, an even more thorough review and development cycles because of the importance of getting certification requirements as perfect as we can and ensuring that the program overall retains its de facto status in the industry. Given your suite of SOA school credentials, as I see professional, analyst, architect, consultant, and so forth, practically speaking, someone who may be in between jobs and volatile economy, employment situation, whatever, is there an entry-level title or do all of these credentials presuppose prior industry experience with SOA? They don't. The program itself, the starting point of the program is the first module, uh, module one, which is a fundamental course that is focused strictly on covering the concepts, the terminology, the primary technologies, the primary considerations, understanding that truly that most of what the program is about is service orientation and the practices and patterns and principles that are part of what the whole community has shaped this into. And that module itself, the fundamental prerequisite for it is that the participant has a IT background and has a basic knowledge of distributed computing. Those are the two essential areas because the module itself doesn't describe the how distributed computing is necessarily different from silo-based or, or monolithic type of system development. But having said that, we do need to go into detail of how they are different and how service orientation then shapes the distributed computing approach in its own way to accomplish its own goals. So that is 